All right, uh, we're going to move on now to another topic of strings, which is also a little bit more complicated. And uh, in order to understand what this, uh, this topic entails, we, we want to start off by talking about the difference between, let's say I have these two strings, string uh, S equals ABC and string uh, Y equals DEF like that. And I want to compare the string somehow to see if they're the same. I want to compare them to see if they're the same. So I can I can do it two, one of two ways. I can go like this, if S equals Y, right? Then I can say same, right? I can say that. Uh, otherwise, I'll say that they're different. So that's one way we could do it. And the other way we could do it would be if we use the dot equals operator, which is what we're going to talk about today. And that would involve going like this. Like that. So you can see there are two different ways to compare strings. And I'm going to tell you right now that this 99% of the time is the wrong way. And that this is what you want. And I'm going to give you a new general rule to follow in Java. When you're comparing primitives to see if they're the same value, use the double equals. When you're comparing primitives, like, you know, int n versus int uh, x, like that, you use the double equals. When you're comparing objects that have been made from classes and you want to see if they have the same stuff inside, use the dot equals. So let me just write that down for you. It says use double equals to compare in uh, primitives and use dot equals to compare objects. And we see that these strings are, are objects because you can see it's made from a class. You know, string is a class because it's capitalized. So this is going to be what you're going to want when you compare strings. Now, this you'll see right here, if I hit the compile button, it will compile because this does have a very specific meaning. And what you're doing here is you're checking to see, are they shallow copies? And what you're asking here is, are they deep copies? Okay, so let's look now at the practical implications of this. So uh, I'm going to create two strings. Now I'm going to create them in a way that I haven't created them before. And I'll tell you later today why I'm creating them this way. But I'm going to go new string ABC. And then I'm going to go S string T equals new string D, uh, ABC, sorry. Like that. See that, right? So I've created two different strings. They both have the same contents. You see that? They have the same contents. Now, I'll tell you right now, this one will create a string called ABC. ABC. And it will set this pointer S to point to ABC. And this one will create a different string. It'll create a different string with also ABC in it. And it will set this pointer T to point to that string. Try to understand this now. There are two different copies of ABC in two different places in memory. S is pointing to one of them and T is pointing to the other. Question, do S and T have the same address, same memory location? Yes or no? No, different. Do they have the same contents? Okay. So if that's the case, which of these will come back true and which one will come back false? Please discuss with your partner.
Shallow copies means the addresses are the same. Deep copies means the contents are the same. What do you think? Mr. Sneed, what do you think this one's going to say? Same or different? It's it's shallow copies. It's same address. This one will be different. What about this one? Same. You get that, right? So let's run it. And you can see the first one tells you it's different. They're, 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 they're different locations in memory, but the contents of the strings are the same. See that, right? Okay, let's try this one now. Same or different, same or different. What do you think? Same or different, same or different. Uh, Miss Missone, what do you think about the first one? And the second one? Okay, different, different. Very good. Let's run it. You can see that, right? Okay, now how about this? I go like this. Now what do you think it's going to say? Same or different? Same or different? Mr. Groflo, what do you think, sir? Same, same. You get the idea? They have the same address, shallow copy, and the contents are the same also. But it's not really a deep copy in this case. I probably shouldn't have put this here. Not really a deep copy. It's actually just a shallow copy. But the contents are the same. Contents are the same. You could see same, same. See that? Do you have a question, Miss? Okay, hold on a second. Did you go new string, Miss? Or did you just go or did you just go equals ABC? Okay, that's a different thing, and we're gonna talk about that next. But here, uh, and here we're gonna say, are the contents the same? Okay, you see that, right? All right, so once again, double equals to compare the addresses and dot equals to compare the contents. So now that is the uh, cover, that is the coverage of the equals method. So the equals method is an important method. The equals method, like all the other string methods are built into the string class, which is in the, in the library. The library is automatically loaded whenever you compile your Java, so you don't have to import the string library. It's part of what comes in automatically, all right? Okay, so now I'm gonna show you something very strange. Miss Sophie has accidentally run across it already, but I'm gonna show it to the rest of you now. Now look over here. You can see now I'm using the shortcut to create these strings. I'm not using the keyword new. You see that, right? I'm just creating it like this. Now, what is your gut telling you? Are they going to be the same address? Are the contents going to be the same? First of all, are the contents the same? We can see that the contents are the same. Are the addresses the same? Look, I got different variables. What do you think? You would think that the addresses should be different, right? But strangely, the addresses are going to come out the same. Let me show you that. You can see they came out the same. So we have to talk about that because Java does something really weird. It says, okay, you, you want to create a string called ABC. First thing it does is it looks at the memory pool of strings and says, do I already have a string that's ABC? And at this point, you don't because it's the first line of code you're uh, executing. Then it comes down here and says, oh, you want a string T called ABC. Let me see if I got one of those already. Does it have one? Yeah. It does. So what it does is temporarily, it sets S and T to point to the same string. It reuses what it's got already. And you're like, but that's really dangerous because later on I can change one. But it's not dangerous. Why? 
Yes, Miss Masone. Strings are immutable. So now later on, if I change one like this, you don't have to worry about S changing because S can't change because these strings are immutable. So after all this code runs, S is still pointing to the original ABC and we've made a whole new DEF string for T. So when we say that strings are pooled, what we're really saying is that the Java, the runtime machine will attempt to reuse strings that have already been created. Now, I just want to be clear about this. If I go like this, is it going to reuse the first string? No, that's a different string. A, B, C, D is a different string. So if I run this now, they're, they're both going to say different. Let me just show you that. You can see they're both say different now. So you can see that that's really confusing. Now, how come when I go like this, it didn't reuse the string? How come? Ms. Caitlin? Because I forced it to make a new string by telling it I want a new string. I used the keyword new. When I use the keyword new, it ignores the string pool and always makes a new string. So now here, what's going to happen down here when I run this? What's it going to say, Mr. Degouge? Right, it's going to say different, same. So let's run this one now. Different, same. Really, really confusing, and it's going to just take you a little while to get used to this. And the best way, of course, is to practice uh, in code, uh, College Board site on Coding Bat, et cetera.